There will probably not be another one like him. Mark Rogers TV on the resignation of the head ball coach, South Carolina, Steve Spurrier. We can run down the records, and we will do that briefly, but you can look those up anywhere. So he um, set the all-time record for wins both at Florida and at South Carolina. He resurrected the Duke football program that, again, fell on hard times as soon as he left. And then he went to Florida, won a national championship in 1996. Uh, and for you younger people, keep in mind that it's not just Will Muschamp who has not succeeded at Florida. Basically, the program was in the abyss for most of its history other than a few spurts in the 1980s. And Steve Spurrier brought Florida football to where it stands today. Uh, fun and gun offense. He was an innovator of the passing offense in college football. Uh, won 228 games, only lost 89, I believe, was the final record. Six SEC championships at Florida and uh, moved to South Carolina. And much like the situation in Florida, when Steve Spurrier arrived at South Carolina, they weren't finishing in the top 10 or the top 25 even. This program actually finished 0-11, completely winless, the season before Lou Holtz took over. And Lou Holtz, and for you very young college football fans, realize Lou Holtz not just a commentator on ESPN up until this season, but one of the great college football coaches of all time at uh, Arkansas, Minnesota, and most notably at Notre Dame. Then to South Carolina, his final stop uh, for Lou Holtz, and he resurrected the program and got it to respectability winning six, seven, eight football games, going to bowl games. And then Steve Spurrier came in in 2005 after a short stint in the NFL with the Washington Redskins, and South Carolina took off. It took him a little while. If you check out uh, Steve Spurrier's record at South Carolina, he tried to take what he established at Florida offensively and move it to South Carolina, and actually his teams won with a running game and with a defense. And when he finally realized that there are multiple way, uh, ways to win, uh, the South Carolina program took off. He embraced uh, the running game. He embraced, um, and he did so at Florida as well. They always had strong running games with uh, the likes of Eric Rett and also Fred Taylor and so forth. But uh, there at South Carolina, the running game defense, uh, they recruited much better than they ever had and won uh, the 2010 SEC Eastern Division Championship. Spurrier couldn't quite get that goal, and he talked about it at SEC Media Days each and every summer, finally winning an SEC Championship at South Carolina. It's never been done in football. So he gets to the title game. They get wiped out by Auburn in 2010. Then three consecutive 11-win campaigns and top 10 finishes. The final one, number four in the country, unprecedented at South Carolina. But it turned on him rather quickly. So the window closed. Those South Carolina teams with Jadavian Clowney and Kelsey Quarles and Chas Sutton, uh, Connor Shaw offensively, um, and certainly the, the, the wide receivers that they had with Ace Sanders and crew uh, weren't able to replace, uh, especially the defense, but the offensive playmakers as well. And uh, they fell on hard times at 7-6 and six last season. And, and this is a football program now uh, – Right at the fork in the road, they need to hire the right guy because if you aren't competitive on the recruiting trail in the SEC, you get buried. Right, Mandy? You get buried in a hurry, and South Carolina is not a good football team. They're right now 0-4 in the SEC. They've got Vandy coming up this Saturday. That's probably their best. That is their best chance at winning a game in the SEC, 2-4 Overall, I'm expecting this team, even if they pull off an upset, you're looking at a four-win season, probably three and nine overall. So Steve Spurrier has mentioned uh, a number of times since um, things headed south last season that he was going to bring the program back. He even said he was going to stick around for five or six years when people talked age and retirement, but uh, he's had enough. I'm a bit surprised that he steps down uh, before the season's over, but at the same time, I don't know how much good he's going to do closing out the season rather than them bringing in uh, the interim coach who's going to be named on Tuesday and then be able to uh, look at their short list 
and start to target some coaches that might be out there. In the next coming weeks and months, we will start to speculate on who those candidates can be. We'd love to hear from you, South Carolina fans in particular, about who you would like to see coaching in Columbia. Let's be reasonable with our choices. Let's talk of a Steve Spurrier's a legacy as a Heisman Trophy winner, a resurrector of programs at Duke, Florida, and South Carolina, as we just uh, detailed, and coaching a Heisman Trophy winner, Danny Werfel, in 1996, the same year uh, the Florida Gators won its only national championship before Urban Meyer stepped onto campus. So Steve Spurrier steps down at South Carolina. The Gamecocks need to hire a strong personality and football guy that can bring recruits to South Carolina in that hotly contested recruiting bed of the Carolinas, Georgia, and the Deep South. Let's talk it up. Spurrier resigns. What's next at South Carolina? Right here on Mark Rogers TV.